Hello, recently I have graduated university. It still feels strange that I most likely will never be a student again. Starting this YouTube channel has given me momentary relief from the ongoing existential crisis about what I should actually do with the rest of my life. However, I wanted to create a personal retrospective on my own experience at university. Going to university is a massive decision that most people nowadays face. I'm really glad that higher education has now become more accessible. Although, even with student finance, it's not a cheap decision and it will leave you with a lot of debt. All angles of university life should be represented to potential students, but I find one key area is ignored in most online resources. This overlooked sphere is how different and traditional higher education is when compared to colleges and high schools. The academic field and university institutions are very specific practices. When I was applying for university, there was not much online about the ways universities operate and assess students that are tailored to someone new to the university scene. There definitely was a larger amount of resources on student accommodation, living independently or even picking a good university. As someone who did not know many people who had gone to university beforehand, it was hard to know what I was getting myself into. Within this video, I wanted to focus upon how unique and strange university practices can be when you begin as a first year student. Many first years spend all that time sorting out which university they are going to, only to find out within the first couple of months that they don't gel with the strict and traditional ways universities run their courses in. Some of the unnecessarily complex practices should be highlighted to those who are not sure if the university path is for them, which is the major aim of this video. I'm not going to reveal what university I attended or any major personal details, but I will reveal that I did a communications degree. Spare change. Spare change, ma'am. Right, I know you STEM lovers need to tell me how difficult my degree was and how high the employment rates are. So I set up an email for you to send your amazingly helpful comments to. The majority of what I say will be relevant for a lot of university degrees, but please remember that there are so many different universities and courses that not everything will fit perfectly. This retrospective is based upon UK universities as I attended one. However, I imagine that there'll be similarities to the American college system and other countries. Plus, I thought that some of my personal anecdotes or brief rants in this retrospective would be humorous for those who have already graduated. Got into Harvard Law. What, like it's hard? So before I get into the more ordinary parts of university life, I briefly wanted to explain the chaos many of us faced during the rise of the coronavirus. The COVID-19 pandemic began at the very end of my first year of university. A lot of my in-person exams were just cancelled and I had two weeks of online lectures. As my second year of university rolled around, it was revealed that everything was going to be online. A lot of people were angry with this decision, but I actually did not mind it. As someone with anxiety, I found the idea of going back to university very daunting after everything that happened in the world. However, adapting to learning on Zoom calls presented its own challenges. All of my teachers definitely did the best of the circumstances, but that did not stop the constant awkward silences and IT-related issues. Several of my university online classes went something like this. Hello, I'm just waiting for more people to arrive so I'll begin soon. Hello, I think your sound is on. Hold on, I'll try and mute them. Give me a second. There. So welcome everyone. I hope you're all doing okay in these weird times. Is there loads of people off sick today or something? I want to see some more faces if possible, please. It's so awkward talking to black screens and I think we all need some interaction, so please turn them on. Thank you, most of you. 
One eternity later. So I'm going to put you into breakout rooms now. I want you to discuss your ideas and feedback later. Hello, so what does everyone think? Hello? Great. So can someone from each group feedback now, please? The camera thing always used to bug me a little bit because I found it incredibly hard to actually listen to what the lecturer was talking about when I had to worry about my camera setup. I still made an effort to talk in those awkward Zoom groups, but I would secretly pretend my camera was broken. Look, I wasn't changing out of my pyjamas before 9am in my own home. Furthermore, quite a few professors would just stick up some slides with maybe a pre-recorded lecture from previous years. One of my lecturers I never actually saw in person ever, which still feels a little strange, but she gave me a great grade. My second year of university was definitely debatable in regards to student loan worthiness, but I still managed to enjoy quite a bit of it. Now, I wanted to cover some more basic and everyday type issues many students will encounter at university. There may be a wide array of issues that I may not have experienced, but these problems in particular with the university system constantly affected me. Referencing is both super important and f***ing ridiculous. I mean, I think most of us understand that crediting academics or people with their own ideas is essential. But most universities take it to the extreme. To avoid getting snagged unfairly by plagiarism checkers like Turner In, students have to reference some very basic ideas. My university was strict with plagiarism, which again, is fair. Students should not be passing off someone else's work as their own. Imagine getting the same grade as someone who just stole their work offline. However, when you need to reference ideas that are very common sense or contain observational information in order to prevent a plagiarism accusation, it becomes a tad silly. Many professors actually advise my classes to find a reference for anything that has the potential to be flagged. The amount of times I spent searching for a reference for something I actually thought of myself was crazy. I feel like universities need a good review in how they tackle referencing. There needs to be an understanding that some ideas are common sense and that two people can have a similar idea or way of explaining a concept. This is not me giving anyone a free pass to steal anyone's work, just an acknowledgement that coincidences can occur. University is like climbing a mountain. You try to start the year with a good steady pace and feel like you're doing well, and then all of a sudden an avalanche happens and you get buried alive in a sheer panic. There are several times that I almost gave up because my own stress levels rocketed to an all-time high. One particular incident that haunts me was the time my young puppy chewed my laptop charger the night before an assignment was due and I almost lost my only copy of it. Unfortunately, the mental health resources at my university left a lot to be desired. But I thought a lot of professors were very understanding and very considerate if you mentioned any issues. Like the professor who ignored my accidental few words over the assignment's word limit due to said puppy incident. Thanks again for that puppy. To build upon that last point, you most likely will receive at least one awful grade at some point in your university time, regardless of how smart or dedicated you are. This is something that happens to almost every student, whether they admit it or not. It's definitely down to the constant work cycle at university. There is always a deadline around the corner, or some major event, or a family member going into hospital the week your final deadlines are due in and you just want to Anyway, you'll most likely tank one of the many assignments you have on your plate during your university course. And that's okay. It's nothing to feel embarrassed about. Just try and ace the next one and you can bring your average back up. This section is very dependent on who your professors are and is a little nitpicky but it still bugs me. 
Some professors will not give you examples of the layout or type of assignment they want, but then will mark you down for not setting it out how they like. So I asked this professor for a past student assignment example like five times because I like to make sure I set things out correctly. He says he will look for one that students cannot plagiarise, despite the fact if you plagiarise anything at university you will definitely be caught out, so that was irrelevant. Later on he turns around and says he does not have an example we can utilise. So I just resorted to badgering him with unnecessary email questions to check it is set out correctly. When it came to the final grade, he has the audacity to mark me down for the layout. I'm so sick of you. I'm so... I'm sick of this stupid school. Now, I could have taken a different road. I could have been huge by now if I'd taken a different path in my life. I could have been famous. I would have been massive. Instead, I've just chosen to waste my time in a pathetic school with loser teachers and idiots like you. And I'm so sick of it. You're pathetic. I'm better than all of you people out there. I'm better than all of you. I try to bring a little bit of hope, a little bit of magic into the school. And I, get a, I try to have a dream. I dare to have a, a dream that's big and you shove it in my face. I get slapped back in my face. No, it's not possible. We can't do that. I'm bloody resigning. I'm so sick of it. Shove it up your ass, Margaret. I'm resigning, everyone. I'm out of here. That's it. I'm gone. There's my letter of resignation, and there's some flowers for my dead dog. Why don't you stick those up your fat ass? Back off, everyone. I'm gone. Every time I got a lower grade than my usual was because there was not a clear past student example of what the lecturer was looking for in that assignment. One of my personal bugbears was when university administrators would give tight work accounts, but assignment markers would get mad that you cannot include everything you've learnt on that module. The amount of times I got you could have included this as feedback. Which was amazing to hear after I had to purposely cut that section out to fit the tight word count. You've probably heard from so many teachers that group work will prepare you for the workplace. In reality it prepares you to hate people and get stuck doing all the work for someone else's grade. In my time at university, I purposely avoided group work like the plague. However, there was one semester where it was unavoidable. The assignment was only worth 40% but I was still dreading it. When we were sorted into random groups, I was with two boys and as someone with crippling anxiety, I asked to move to a group with a girl. This calmed my anxiety and I was a lot more comfortable so we got the project done. There was a boy in the group who did very little though. He literally did not tell us he was in Spain the week before the project was due and his part was not ready yet. I mean, he had weeks to do it beforehand but we just told him to send us what he had and we would do it. Thank god I did move though because my previous group were hardly ever in lectures and the one I went with got a first on the assignment. Group work at university is just handled completely wrong in my opinion. You could have a student who gets a first in every single assignment they do individually but then they get put into an awful group that partially tarnishes their grade. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not you stupid bastard? The amount of group work horror stories I've heard is ridiculous. This happened to me about three times and each time was more awkward than the last. Two of the professors were really sweet though and tried their hardest to work with me. The other professor just took his chance to get off early, which saved us both I think from the most awkward hour of our lives. Sometimes I felt super sad for the professors because you could tell they put a lot of effort into the seminar and they had hardly anyone turn up. Maybe I'm just too sentimental or something. So you're often told to pick modules that best fit your chosen career path. However, I think there are four main things you need to consider over that. The first is the assessment process. Trust me, nothing is worse than having a module that sounds super interesting and realising it's all exam or group assignment based. I've already mentioned how awful group work is, but exams were not much better. I mean, you essentially have to write a regular assignment, but from memory. Yeah, so I recommend avoiding them if you can. Secondly, you need to consider the teacher. As mentioned before, some professors can impact your grade or even your enjoyment of a particular module. I would suggest trying to find out what a particular professor is like through word of mouth or possibly online. Really interesting modules can be ruined by a lazy professor who rarely shows up. 
On the other hand, a fantastic professor can make dull content fun to learn about. Another thing to consider is your current grades. I think this is key in your final year, as you have built up a bank of grades already and you'll be looking to see if you can achieve your desired final result. If you think you need a good boost to achieve that first, I'd suggest taking a few modules you think you can ace. You need to weigh up if taking a module more suited to your career path is worth possibly not getting the grade you want. Finally, it's important to evaluate your interest in the module. If you're taking a module you cannot stand, you're not going to get up at 6.15am to get there for 9 if you commuted like I did. What are your backups? I don't need backups. I'm going to Harvard. To conclude things, I hope I've given you a wider understanding of the academic culture surrounding universities. I feel like I was sort of left in the dark and how different university would be from secondary education. The minute you get into college in the UK, you're rushed into picking a possible career direction. If you decide to go the higher education route, you are hurried into picking a university and a course before you really understand what you are signing up to. If you are someone who dropped out at university, please don't feel disheartened. This heavily formal and complicated way to learning is not for everyone. My university experience is quite unique from older and younger students, but I hope my strange advice and funny little anecdotes helped you if you're in this stage of your life right now. Please let me know if you enjoyed this video, and to the ex-students out there, you should share any advice you have.